Okay, today I'm going to be using the world's first microwave vacuum. So I've had a lot of requests to put a microwave in a vacuum chamber, but I wanted to do it while it was running. And so I thought of different ways to do it, trying to find a small microwave that could fit in the vacuum chamber, but I thought of a better way. So the microwave already has a strong frame around it. All we need to do is remove the air. And so it's the same thing if you just put a vacuum bag around the microwave and then suck out all the air, then the inside volume of the microwave will now become a vacuum. And so that's how I'm going to be doing this today. I'm going to be vacuum bagging the microwave and then putting different things in the microwave. I'll be trying ivory soap and then I'll be trying a CD. We'll see how big the ivory soap actually expands while under vacuum. And then also we'll see if the CD sparks act any different in the vacuum chamber. So the pressure that I'm going to be achieving in the microwave here is around 20 kilopascals, about one fifth atmospheric pressure. So lower than the pressure on top of Mount Everest. And then as an added bonus, I'm going to be doing this to my microwave that I've modified to be able to film inside of it. So you get a clear view of what's actually going on inside without that annoying mesh in front of it. Okay, let's get it under vacuum. Ivory soap cloud in a microwave vacuum. There's our whole soap bar. <laughs> okay, so you can see now that I let the air back in and also that it cooled down, it's compressed down a lot. It did fill the entire vacuum chamber, I mean the entire microwave, and now it's just compressed down. But overall, it does seem fluffier than when I did it not in a vacuum. Okay, so ivory soap puffs up in the microwave because first of all, it has a lot of air in it and it also has moisture. And when it heats up in the microwave, the gas expands, especially when it's under a vacuum because the pressure is lower and so it can expand faster. But overall, it does seem fluffier than when I did it not in a vacuum. Okay, so it's very hot on top after all that. You can tell where the magnetron is in the microwave because it's the hottest spot. See the hot spot right there? 
<clears throat> this is the corner of the microwave, 52 degrees Celsius on the outer skin of it. So there was no airflow going through here at all, and so it just started overheating. Next we'll be trying a CD in a microwave in a vacuum. So this could be interesting because in order for sparks to occur, there needs to be a material to ionize. So if there's less air or a vacuum in between the spark gaps, then a spark technically can't occur. Okay, I felt like that lasted, the sparks lasted a lot longer than non under vacuum. Okay, so this is really cool. So you can see the bubbles that formed in the vacuum. So you can see the molten plastic bubbles that formed in the microwave in the vacuum. This definitely doesn't happen in regular air. So it's, it's hollow inside. I can even see condensation on the inside of it. Overall, the sparks looked about the same. I don't think we're low enough vacuum for it to matter. In fact, even at very, very, very low vacuums with turbo molecular pumps, you can get, you can still get sparks to occur. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're not subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell button to be notified when my latest video comes out. And if you have any more crazy suggestions, let me know in the comments section and I'll see you next time.